And we are rolling. What are you doing right now? Uh, removing the valve keepers to pull the valve springs out. This kit comes with, uh, with a, a, a performance set of valve springs to accept the cam. And uh, get rid of the stock junk. Then I'm, the cam you're doing on your biggest what, is a 550, 550 SNS cam. Big so obviously push. anytime you go over 500 spec, you want to do springs, right? That is correct. Because otherwise what happens if you don't? And then well, then you, you, can, you can either break a spring, you can bend a valve, you can, um, you just, you just f everything up. Too much power, baby. Yeah. The kit comes with it. I don't think you can get a 120 without that, right? No. But some people tend to do springs no matter what. Okay. Yeah, I'd prefer to do them no matter what, just for the, for the sake of it. Just for the sake of, of, of not blowing your engine up. Even if you do a, a smaller than 500 series cam. Can we do a video? Fastest That's bike in all of Jersey, because other YouTubers are lying to you. <laughs> okay. There we go. <coughs> oh, you make it seem so easy. No. Maybe. You do. You're such a professional. It's those, uh, it's those doctor hands that I have. Hmm. Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, we have something big going on at the Tour Custom Cycle Shop. Um, Sal's bike is on the lift right now. We're going to be doing a 128 kit, a 1 SNS 28 kit for that. So we've got these big, big jugs right here. Um, we have the brand new pistons, which look really pretty, really nice. Um, obviously wider since the cylinders are much bigger um, and it comes every it comes with the whole kit it comes with the cam cam is a what five 550 cam and then this is actually the granite color uh, especially for his bike because he has a 2022 CBO um, the whole kit comes with the whole assembly to do a stage two um, and then we're changing out the springs which we have right here which they already started changing out on the top of uh, the head on that side. Um, solid push rods, it comes with the adjustable uh, push rods, but we're doing the uh, fueling solid push rods for that. And yeah, this bike is going to be a beast. What are the numbers? What are the numbers? What are the numbers? We, we shall know soon, because as soon as we're done installing, well, I'm not installing this, Mike and Mike will. Uh, as soon as everything is installed, we're going to put the bike on the dyno, give you guys some official numbers of what this big board kit is going to give us, man. This thing is beautiful, though. I cannot wait to see, A, hear it, two, get on it. You don't to borrow your bike, right? Should you use it? Of course. Of course. So, yeah, I want to definitely get my taste of it. 128 kit. Obviously, we hear a lot of people doing, you know, 131s and just building out, you know, 114s, 117s, so stage 3, stage 4. But I haven't seen too many myself. I haven't seen too many people do this type of kit. And I'm super excited to see the numbers that we get out of it. Um, let's continue along with the install. Mike, you want to add anything else to this or no? No, we're good. We're no? moving along. Moving along. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Moving along. Move along. Move along. That's Star Wars if you didn't get it, so. <laughs> yeah! Welcome back to another video. That's what keeps them when, you, when the lifter collapses. When the oil stays. It stays inside. Lifter collapses, all the oil drains out of it. That's what a collapsed lifter is. Alright, so we're up to the point where we're about to install the jugs, pistons, and everything. Uh, before you do that, you told me that you gotta wash everything, right? Yeah, we gotta wash all the you know machining material that may still be in the scratches or the uh, cross hatches of the cylinder there. Um, once we get that clean, then we can uh, throw the pistons on the connecting rods and uh, put everybody together. It's your piston? My piston. It's my artwork. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we came across what issues with the oilers? So the, uh, the piston jet oilers, this is a new one actually. Um, I'll show you one out of the bag here. The old one's blue. Oh, I'll show the old ones. Okay, here's the old one. So purpose of that is to 
it's got a little pinhole in, in, in right the, here. Right. So that will shoot oil on the bottom of the piston to help in cooling the piston. Um, what else, Mike, does it do besides cooling? Just adds lubrication to the piston walls. Okay. So they open up between 12. They have a little check ball and spring inside. They open up between 12 and 15 psi. We put the we have this piston jet oiler tester here. So we put his oilers on here. And these were, the check balls were opening at five pounds of pressure and they were already leaking and blowing oil. Oh wow, okay. So we've got some new ones here that we're gonna be installing on this bike and these open correctly between 12 and 15 PSI. Is this something that's common for MHs? We've seen it happen. Um, they actually make aftermarket ones for twin cams. Um, nobody's making them yet for the MHs, but uh, we, we have seen it. If you look out there, there are videos where people have done tests on like eight of them and they've gotten like six out of the eight or bad. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so we're just gonna, we're, since we're, we're in here already and it's a part, we're just gonna, we're just gonna replace them. If you guys do need these, they're about 12 bucks, so yeah, it's cheap. Like it's just the labor part as far as just going to change them out. We'll give a nice little close up. Excuse me, sir. I don't want you touching my butt. These right here are the oilers. You bad oiler, you. It's just blowing. Stamp boilers, I don't know how to blow anything. Did we get a picture of the piston for sale? I did, I already saw it too. <laughs> <laughs> what about that one? I gotta take a picture of this one too. Did you wash this already or no? No. Did you show us your pits? <clears throat> nope, uh, checking, the, checking the piston ring gaps. Check-in of the piston ring gaps. Check-in of the piston ring rack. <laughs> See, you can't even say it right, bro. You gotta just, you gotta warm up. You're learning from me, just to mumble bullshit and not actually get anything else. Well? It's coming out like orange now, not black. That's rust. So you want it to be completely like... Completely clean. So you don't want to see this? Anything. Okay. Don't let it dry. Keep washing. What do you mean don't let it dry? Don't let it dry. Like, like when you wipe it, when you wipe the, the, the cylinder wall with that, that's fine, but re-wet it. And then, you know, if, you, if you've got it clean and you notice there's nothing on there, just re-wet it again and then come back in here and I'll, I gotta finish the process with it. And hurry the fuck up. And I have another one for you to do. Well, let's get punched. Son of a bitch.
sounds amazing. Just walk away. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna hear my fart. What? I'm not gonna hear my bike on next to this bike anymore. Nope. So what, what, what's the plan? We gotta turn it on. We it gotta eat cycler a few more times to continue to set the uh, the engine into place. Then we gotta go through the braking process, which is a few hundred miles of easy riding. But otherwise, it's done. It's ready to roll. And after the braking period, then we can put it up on the dyno and give it a full tune, and, and it'll be a hundred percent set. What I may do though is I may hook it up and do a little. Right, I want to see where we're sitting because they, they want you to have to you can do easy riding on the dyno. Yeah, yeah there's some easy riding. I'm going to see where the air fuels are and maybe do a little auto tuning to get them where they Because if they're too lean, I got to get them where it's enough for the brake. Wow. 128 feet, man. Pretty impressive. That is impressive. Sounds good. Quiet. Um, we are going to be doing some. Ride reviews on this bike, so as soon as Sal gets a bike, well, as soon as Sal gets a bike, as soon as Sal gets it back, then um, I'm definitely gonna get on this bike and take it off a ride, let you guys know how I feel on it, and get the uh, your feedback back from the guys who built the bike here, who put the engine together, and then from Sal himself, that's gonna be great, man. But you might have to wait for that video until next year when Sal rides again. <laughs> <laughs> If you are in the area you want to get some work done like this here bike, make sure to stop by Tour Custom Cycles. Hit them up. All the descriptions will be linked down below. And if you want to see... <laughs> oh wait, we're going to show Duffy's 30-30 can? Where is it? Oh, fuck that can. There we go. <laughs> really quick, because we just got, got a little shipment in. We got a 30-30 can that just got delivered in. It's going to be going to Duffy's bike right here. This thing is in a... This is the can that everybody was telling me to put in my bike, and I went ahead with the fueling, but who knows, later down the line, who knows, if I want to switch, I might switch it to this, but this, this can right here, 45, right? 45. It's gonna go on a, on a 107 Ramen Glide, Glide, baby. The Ramen Glide. This guy's gonna be happy with that. Next week. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Like always, ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. <laughs> yeah, these uh, this is the the, the the the. I'm really bad at this right now. Could you restart? <laughs> <Sure>. And cut. <laughs>